and we're back to overtime with ot today guys i have the last man to put gordon ryan to sleep the man who broke onto the scene for putting the goat to sleep david As- davis asari thank you so much for taking the time to hop on hop on the mic man yeah thank you for having it's me. been a long time i've been i've been wanting christos and i've been talking about having you on the podcast for a while i've kind of been like because i've seen you put other people on the podcast like down like hopefully he reaches out soon like i'm assuming i'm waiting on the pocket you know mm-hmm. so is, is this the first podcast you ever do ever, first ever. really yeah well that's that's freaking awesome man i'm happy to know that the first podcast this one right here, here. <laughs> Um, Davis, let us know a little bit about yourself before we get started. There's a lot to uncover, man. You've been, I mean, you came down to the U.S. and you just have like, you blew up, man. You blew up pretty quickly. You know, your game blew up pretty quick, quickly too. want to go over all that. But before that, I just want to know, you know, the quick rundown. Where are you born and where did it all start for Davis? Okay. So from the, like, sorry, sorry, I guess like day one. So basically I'm born and raised in Norway even though that's like the most like like obviously you look at me you wouldn't expect that i'm from norway but i was born and raised both of my parents are from ghana um they moved to norway like maybe a little over like 35 years ago or something um so i got two older siblings one sister one bigger brother and uh yeah i basically grew up in norway and that's where like most of my childhood and everything has been so you're basically first generation immigrant yeah you, yeah how has that been like, you know, adapting? Because when you, because I'm, I'm similar, I'm similar yeah. to you, you know, how, yeah, exactly. you know, Middle East moved to North America. Yeah. It's, there's a little yeah. bit of adaptation. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like you get different types of problems. Cause like you would think like a guy who moves from a completely different place, um, like kind of later on in life would have a lot of problems. But when you, when you're born in the country, we think, okay, he's, he's settled. He knows how things work, but it's still like kind of creates like this culture clash where like, at home you're not in the same country anymore because like my parents like they have this same like they barely speak norwegian bro like they lived there for 35 years and still they primarily speak akan like ghanian Mm -hmm. and they have a lot of ghanian friends and stuff like so they keep that community going and stuff so like like usually like i eat the same i eat fufu i eat all the ghanian foods you know (laughs) jollof you know jollof rice and all that so like when you meet like start to socialize with other like norwegians and stuff you kind of like you don't have the same problems at home and stuff so it's different for sure yeah but it's good because you got like you know different perspectives from your schoolmates and everything you know would not change it for a world i think it's perfect i love the fact that i had that like yeah. Always when I grew up that I had my own like culture that I could like keep for myself and like kind of be proud of and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've been you've been to Ghana before? Yes, I have. Uh but it's a long time now. Like we used to always travel in the summer. Um but I kinda stopped when I uh, I think I the last time I was was like sixteen when I was sixteen, seventeen. That was actually right before I started Jiu-Jitsu. That was like the last time I ever went to Ghana. Okay. And then that's when I started to get introduced to it. What were you doing before Jiu Jitsu? Any sports? So I did a bunch of stuff, like obviously like the Norwegian school government kind of forces you to do a lot of like different types of like activities and sports. That's good. Like I think like the country in general, like when it comes to sports, they emphasize a lot of like having like numerous skills instead of like honing into one, which I feel like America is a little bit better at. And that like, again, can maybe give people a little bit better. Like I have a very wide field of like when it comes to like different sports and stuff. And I think it that kind of benefited a lot when I started Jiu Jitsu. So, um, but I primarily did track and field. That was my primary sport before Jiu Jitsu. That does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> track and field, that's crazy. So what, sprints? Yeah, I, did, I used to do sprints. 100 meter sprint? Yeah. Oh, what else? Uh, like I would try, honestly, like if you mention any types of, sports i probably try the sport no but like in the track and field you did the hundred oh yeah no but i was you sh- like i used to run like do long distance as well but primarily like uh like the genre that i used to do the most was uh, track and field or it's 100 meter sprints that's sick and you did you ever compete in, in track yeah, and I field i did it a couple of times yeah that's i was sick. decent yeah i was all right was the main accomplishment in track and field that we had like uh i won basically this um i guess it's like a regional type uh like, I don't know how you can kind of translate to the American, but I guess it's like a regional type uh, uh, championship, you know? Okay. Well, that's still pretty good. Because, I mean, Norway, they, 
what is it known for mostly? Skiing for sure. I was going to say. Winter sports, yeah. like we're pretty dominant in like Olympics, winter sports and stuff. Yeah. Soccer. Soccer, we have pretty, very good, like, like you also have to like put in mind, like the country is pretty small, bro. Like it's like, I think the population is like 6 million. Mm -hmm. And still we have like, we have a bunch of like people in the, in the winter sports, like who was like world champions, has world records and everything. Yeah. But even like, I think like the guy who has the world record in 400 meter um, hurdle is Norwegian. Like he has the world record in that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the one who has the world record or won the Tokyo Olympics. He's like 23 or something. He got, um, I think a world record in the 1500 meter uh, run. Okay. And uh, like there's pretty decent track and field people. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we have like different sports when it comes to like football, like Erling Holland and yeah, what's his name, Martin Odegaard. And yeah, we, hard, yeah, it's pretty decent. I mean, you mentioned like the upbringing is like you know they encourage you to be active, yes. they encourage you to be you know have a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, you know, is is that did your parents know that moving into Ghana, uh, moving from Ghana to Norway, did they like? kind of anticipate that it would be better for you guys to go there as opposed to, you know, just like that. staying in a hundred percent. The whole thing like my parents had was like, let's move. Like I always, it's always kind of been a gray area why my parents moved. Cause like Ghana is not that like, there's no war going on okay. and a little bit of corruption, like kind of all of the countries in Africa almost. Yeah. But, uh, but in like, they want to like retire in Ghana, like Ghana is where they want to stay and stuff. Yeah. So, but when we talk about it, it's mostly like why did you even leave but it was basically just to have a little better life like yeah the opportunities were just a little bit better in norway mm -hmm. the country is beautiful it's nice it's uh the structure and everything education is free yeah like it's just the best place to raise kids and like mm -hmm. have them to become a little bit better yeah i remember when we when we spoke last time you were telling me like how much you actually like the country like you love the country like the nature everything like the 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 lifestyle yeah and that's awesome man so track and field many sports how'd you how'd you find out about jiu-jitsu then so basically like i I did really well at track and field and I, like my coach was really bummed out that i like stopped going because like i did well when i went to practice i didn't train that much like i i was i was gaming a lot at the time like i was pretty active but still like i did a lot of bunch like a bunch of stuff but i didn't take it as serious because i didn't think it was that fun and uh, I stopped doing that and I was like, I kind of have to like actually like start working out again, like do some proper stuff. Okay. And then my brother was like, he was really into like MMA and UFC and stuff. Like he watched like every match that like, went on and stuff. So I'm like, really into it. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, why don't you do anything like related to martial arts? And I was like, all right. So basically I just went on line and just trying to figure out like what is normal. Like, Cause Norway is not known to have like a pretty like no martial arts or MMA type. Yeah. So I just tried to like find out like what is, what is the good here, and then I kind of stumbled all over, over jiu-jitsu. Did my first class and just never stopped training. Yeah. So you you stopped track and field not for jiu-jitsu. You just stopped it initially because you were doing other things. Like yeah, basically. I just I uh, it was one small period. Like like I at this point I went to what's it called? I guess high school, and I had like this. Um, what you guys would call them. Like in high school, you can kind of uh, choose different paths, right? And I t took like the sports type path. So I did a lot of like, I did a lot of physical activities oh, like yeah, during yeah. school, mm -hmm. way more than maybe other people would. Yeah, they have. Exactly. And uh, so I was like, my day-to-day -day life, like I was doing school and everything, but I was like doing, I was doing like gym, like almost every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was still active, but I still was like, I have to find something to do at the mm -hmm. at the spare time. So I ended up doing jujitsu. And isn't it weird? A lot of people get into jujitsu for that same reason. Yeah, it's very. It's because you're not like I'm the same as you. I was yeah. I was playing like trying to be as competitive as I could in in soccer, mm -hmm. you know. And then the same thing, I stopped, and then I needed to fill that void. Yeah, it's weird how jujitsu fills that void for a different. This is like always creeps in and finds a way to like help. Yeah, it's crazy. Different walks of life yeah. are able to use that mm -hmm. as something to fill that void, that competitive void, mm -hmm. that athletic void. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's it's 100%. crazy. Like, it just sh speaks about the sport, you know? Yeah. It speaks like how good it is. Like, like, it just really for everybody. Yeah. It's super cool. You can kind of tell. And especially when you do jiu-jitsu, you start to meet other new people and you start to figure out how they got into jiu-jitsu and mm -hmm. you see like wow all these people are so different and they ended up at the same place like at Roka, like everyone all of us is like 
mm. we're not even like majority of the people at Roca are not even from America, and no, still true. like, still we all just kind of like end up together, and now we're training yeah. the same thing, but we come from such like different paths, right? You know. So let's let's see. You you were pretty good at track and field. Yeah. Right. Okay. When you started jiu jitsu, what were your first first thoughts about like the sport? Because obviously, when you start, you I just, sucked. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely like very eye opening. Like it was very cool to do something that no my none of my friends did, okay. or none of the people I knew in my same age or school and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it was pretty new to them. So like I'm kind of doing like a martial arts, I guess, like a fighting. Mm -hmm. Like let's be honest, we're not really fighting, you know, but. <laughs> But the thing is, like, it's just very similar, you know? So the thing is, I think doing that was very cool to me. So I, I just kept doing it, even though I kind of sucked in the beginning. Where where did you start at first? So it was the the city in Norway I'm from and raised and born and everything. It's called Stavanger. And uh, that's there was a place called Stavanger MMA Center. Uh -huh. And they had, like, obviously MMA, like Muay Thai and all these different stuff. And they had a pretty solid, like, jiu-jitsu community as well. Like way before I started, they already had like a bunch of people competing and stuff. And yeah. that's awesome. So you 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 would say that you're gifted in certain ways, right? I would. Let's see it. Let's God hear. God bless me in some ways. <laughs> well, I, I did go. What is the one thing God bless you with? Man? What is the <laughs> the main thing? Let's hear it, man. Let's let the guys. Say, Davis Asari say, is pound for pound the strongest guy in the room. Like, correct, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Real honestly, honest to God, I never ever thought about this before I moved to the States. Like no one, like I've heard like a couple of times, like Dang. you're strong. I swear to God, like you're strong and everything, but I've never heard it as much as I had until I moved to the States in Trent Europa. And then I heard it like numerous times and now I just believe. We have, <laughs> but we have facts to prove it. We have actual numbers to prove it. What is that thing called? The thing where you the grip thing. What is it? What do they call it? Yeah, the grip. Just there's something you squeeze and it tells you how strong your grip is. You hit the high score more than like Not more than Luke, more than Gordon. Right or wrong? I don't know, bro. So what are you trying to say? You're trying to say people in US are weak? Uh, no. Honestly, the um, so I remember when uh, you remember when Sebastian Rodriguez came to visit. Sebastian Rodriguez. Or Unity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you Damn, I came to blend. visit. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So when he came to visit, because he's actually been, like, from the city I'm born and raised in, and he visited Espen, and he told me when he trained in Norway, he was like, Norwegians, like, are actually, like, as a people, like, really strong. Dude. Which is kind of funny to think, because I was like, I started to think about it a little bit, like, damn, like, all those random gyms I've been at, like, there's always, like, been a fool, like, who's, like, super strong, bro. Like, always, like, comp like, it's very interesting. So when I started to feel like high level resistance and strength, I feel like I've kind of felt it before I got here. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've had similar thoughts. I remember there was there was a period of time where we were like basically the juniors from the DDS New York days. We were going like Ethan, Nikki, myself, um, and other guys sometimes, Damien, you know, we we'd go a lot to Europe to teach and there was one time we all went at the same time to Amsterdam we did like a camp there Amsterdam. yeah it was after Amsterdam the city <laughs> you know the city of canals <laughs> and waffles <laughs> nothing else guys <laughs> and beautiful sunsets mashallah mashallah that's it so anyways he, they were saying like man, what's going on with I feel like people in Europe in general I, Europeans yeah, yeah. there is the, like here I get I'm not tall like I'm six feet foot like a uh, flat and like i'm not tall at all in norway like norway the average height is way taller than this here are you serious i'm pretty sure the average height so i don't know in the inches what it is in the or what's it called feet yeah but uh in the centimeters the average height in norway for a man is 180 damn yeah that's hard 180 or 179 i'm not sure which between those two but it's or even 181 i'm not gonna and i'm 183 you're 183 yeah Damn, I th I think I'm 180. Like I'm barely above average. And here is like I'm pretty sure when I check Texas compared to Norway is like completely different. Like we're just way taller. What do you think it is? You think like it's just, the milk, brother? It's the, the milk, milk, the water, the oxygen. I think everything. I think we can agree. We can agree that the food. Oh my god! In that part of the world, you can't even the quality is 
different. It's different. There's something when completely we were different. In Croatia, when we were just shopping, we could just tell immediately there's just different. Bro. And we, we didn't go to a Whole Foods. No, we didn't go to a proper. We didn't go to the Whole Foods of Croatia. No worries, bro. Imagine no worries, bro. I'm telling you, bro, you guys are drinking Voss like it's fucking. Voss is literally a place in Norway. Like, Voss is, is Norwegian water. I'm drinking Voss in the tap in Norway. Are you serious? I swear to God. I swear to God, you're drinking Voss in the tap in Norway. The milk, bro, I hate milk, but I love Norwegian. What? Was it the creamier? Like it's just what? better, bro. Everything is just better, bro. I tell you. That's heartbreaking because we're here now. We're in the U.S. No. now. Unfortunately, trying to make the whole team move. So would that be a reason for you to move back to Europe? I mean, I was going to ask you later on your plans in the future, but we retire. can touch up on it. You're going to retire in Europe? In 100%. 100%. I love that. 100%. I love that. Okay, so we'll get to we'll get to it more in a little bit. But for now, mm -hmm. let's hear about jujitsu journey real quick. You started, okay, first couple of years. What was going on? Are you were you taking it seriously? Are you competing? Like the get go, I was like, I want to become, I want to be one of the best. And because you because you already had it from track and field. Yeah, I definitely had some competition or competitiveness from that, or just being competitive in general. Like I'm not super competitive, but when it comes to like sport, it always like kind of came natural to me. So when you good at something you're just naturally trying to like be even better or win just in general yeah so i feel like uh and one person as well so i had a coach and he has actually an imam as well and he used to train at the gym i was at and he was like his mentality was like you have to just train all the time and just try to become the best and he really instilled that in me like very early on even like in a at a delusional level where i just kept training all the time because of it were you already teaching at the at the mosque like early on in your training? No, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't teaching like teaching jujitsu. Yeah. So, first, like no, at this point, like Norway's uh, jujitsu is not this is not that bad, honestly. Like you have to also remember, like we have already very well known people from Norway, like Tommy and Espen. At this point, yeah, they do. We're doing and Tarik, obviously. Tarik was crazy. Like at this point, yeah, like Tarik Apod is a big thing and. He is all over. like, yeah. and these are three people very well known in the international circuit doing super well. Uh -huh. So that obviously just enhance like how the whole country in general, when it comes to jujitsu, just like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And people start training more and like, like me being motivated was mainly because I saw other people from Norway, like actually doing well. Yeah. And I was like, I want to do that. Like, why can't I do that? Mm -hmm. So uh, it definitely helped a lot, like having people like that. So the training in Norway, when it comes to the gym, like was kind of not high level, but people are good. Like every purple, every color belt in Norway, if you roll, like is like America is not ahead in my mind when it comes to that. America has a lot of good, what like all of the best guys almost. Yeah. But when you, if you look at the ratio of the number of people, like Norway has very good grappling in my opinion when it comes to like ratio and everything. Europe so, too, man. Yeah, just Europe in general, right? Yeah, you can tell. But I think. When I started, like I was kind of under my own, like I couldn't teach because I didn't know more than the people around me. I feel like. Okay, so from the get go, you were starting to compete right away. Yeah. Were you, were you going out like internationally? Because Europe, like going international, not is is not that hard compared yeah. to like North yeah. America. North America, I feel like the way the way Europeans go from like let's say Norway to Denmark or yeah. Norway to the it's, Netherlands, it's like, it's like going the States, exactly. Mm -hmm. So. I think honestly, that's one of the main reasons why I started to get a little success more than anyone else in my position at that time. Like, like I started when I was like 17, 60, I'm not sure yet, but yeah. I think it was 17. And like, there was people younger than me, like doing better than me at that point from Norway, like internationally. And I haven't never competed internationally. I just competed in Norway. And like, I think I won my first, no, I got second in my first tournament. And then I won my second. And then like after that, like goes kind of up and down in Norway. Like I wasn't like going, doing super well, Yeah. but I was active. Okay. And uh, I feel like at my age, I went to venture out and compete internationally very early Yeah. compared to how much I had trained yeah. just to do it. And I feel like that was one of the main reasons why I got a lot of, yeah. like started to boost. Cause um, I started to see the level of the people like outside of Norway. I was like, this is super, this is, this is not different from how it is at home, mm -hmm. first of all. And this is how you get a little bit of exposure at least just to compete and stuff and like look at how you i feel like that gave me a very good like boost definitely like takes the myth out of like oh these guys are so good yeah. these guys. 
at this point for your training, I'm sure like any competitor you fit, you're looking in the face, do you have that same thought process? There's nobody really for you like, well, I can't no, beat this guy. Like, not at all. Not, at all. not anymore. Because right? yeah. you've seen the level. They have two arms, two legs. Brother. There's just, the thing is, as well, I feel like um, like uh, one of the things about uh, competing uh, internationally from Europe, because I feel like that's one of the problems why people, especially younger people, are not getting that success from Europe and getting that exposure is because they're too focused on the whole like America hype. So what they do, they train all year round, like in Europe and never competes. And when they do compete, they gather all of their money and they go straight to worlds. I observe worlds mm -hmm. or like they put all of their money to do, like go to LA and stuff. And it's a big, like it's pressure and they never compete. Like you have these kids doing opens, IBGF opens all the time, competing right next to where worlds is usually like all of these, like literally so much doing kids pants and everything like kids in mm. Europe are not doing those majors as of like 10 year old, you know? Yeah. So I feel like people really try to gather all their money and try to travel to do those, but they're not benefiting uh, from the things around them. Mm. So like me personally, like I like way before uh, ADCC had opens in America. Like I ha already did like three opens, ADCC opens in Europe. Yeah. And like used that. That's where I met Dan like first time when I did ADCC Romania. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I just, I met Mateusz Czerczynski way before he was like a big like, thing yeah? in America. Like he ankle locked me way before it was like the meta, you know? Yeah. That was at an ADCC Poland open, Polish open, because they've done that for like a minute, you know? Yeah. So I feel like if you start to utilize those around you more mm -hmm. and like build your name, that's what like, I feel like you see a lot of good people start to do that more, like building their names in Europe and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. and I think, and then like reach out into the, I think that's the best approach. Yeah. We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of like, we're seeing a lot of U athletes from Europe do very good, man. Yes. And not only that, we're seeing like signature moves come out of yes. Europe. Like we talked about Tycho Plata. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I know Lex Kimura, we, we, you know, you can call it also Lex Kimura, but I know like it's kind of his signature move. 100%. It's his trademark. Like you can't even, like a lot of people know him for that. So that's very cool. Yeah. I mean, that's huge because you, you know, you're leaving kind of your name right. in Jiu Jitsu. Literally, like he can, like if Jiu Jitsu lives on way past his lifetime, like most likely, like that name is just going to stay there. <laughs> it's Which insane. Is kind of crazy to cement. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. That's crazy. Another athlete you mentioned, Szczecinski. Yeah. I mean, I know the ankle lock was around before, Bro, but him. let's say that he, he put it back on the scene you can't, big man. time. That's crazy. He you know, wild, like the shotgun ankle lock. Very good. I think is, and it's super cool that maybe it doesn't have the exposure mm -hmm. as he should have, mm -hmm. but like, but the people who should know knows, you know, like the real, like the competitor in the scenes, like the good people actually knows like, all right, he's, he's very good. Uh -huh. And it's cool. That is the European who's done it. Like, yeah, European, like, uh, had that type of footprint, uh -huh. not coming from like the, the big USA, which uh -huh. is kind of cool. I think. Yeah. I mean, and I, if I'm not wrong about this, I'm, I know for a fact, he doesn't compete that much in the U S right. And he, he's mostly in Europe yeah. doing what you mentioned, go to yes. use the resources around us. Yes. And was, you would think like, like everyone is like, oh, all of the sources in America and everything. And don't get me wrong, majority of it, like there's, there's a reason why I'm here. Like we're not gonna, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like he, he didn't get it from here, I guess. Like he developed his own skill set back in Europe. Yeah. I mean, things are changing, man. Like, like when you started jujitsu compared to now, different. like is the, the scene, the competition scene is different. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, for sure. It's way more. Like it always gets more competitive over competitive over time. For sure. But like now, like there's so many opportunities when it comes to competition, so many opportunities for money, making money, competing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I remember I had like a lengthy conversation with Tommy and he was like, bro, when I was at your age, like I was not making that much money, like doing Jiu Jitsu at all. Like I wasn't even making, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of cool to know that I'm in the position where I can kind of just do this. Yeah. Still hone into my skills and like mm -hmm. trying to become better just doing this. You have that. You have the the competitions, the rule sets. Like how many rule sets are there now? We're too many at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've competed under most of them, no? At this yeah, point? Most of them, I've yeah, I'm pretty sure. The only rule set I haven't um, bounced in right now, I believe, is um, the rounds type rule set. The we rounds. had uh, judges like CGI type and uh, yeah. like Aiga. 
Like I would never compete with those two. You were supposed to. Oh, true. Oh, After one the point. Boston, yeah, oh, true. we're gonna get that. We're gonna bro, get to that. In a bit. You, <laughs> we're gonna get to that. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna get to that in a bit. <laughs> Davis and I earlier this year, guys, we went through a spiritual experience oh, really two did. weeks in a row, and Christos oh, a little bit. We threw, <laughs> we put we threw Christos in the mix as well. Huh? We're not suffering alone, <laughs> homie. You're coming in. You're suffering with us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But yeah, you, you, what about the pit? Have you experienced with the pit no, before? No, I haven't, which I would love to one day. I would, it would be very cool. Cause what are your thoughts on the pit? It looks very, I think it seem, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously you kind of have to adapt and it will be like, you saw the preparation for all, most people CGI. Like mm -hmm. you saw the tech, it's like building a wall and stuff. Like, yeah. I feel like you have to do more of that if it's going to become like this very mainstream thing to yeah. have like the pit. Yeah. Like you can see all these like other promotions start to incorporate it like small yeah. promotions. So that's kind of going to be a hazard to, I guess, like get used to. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea behind it makes completely sense. It makes sense. Man. Can't escape. Karate Combat, the first ones to bring the pit. Super cool. And they, it wasn't like meant for grappling in the beginning. No. But then like if you look at jiu-jitsu matches, like especially like ADCC, how much time do they spend from the second they say stop Yeah. to the second we actually stop? <laughs> To the second the referee walks over to grab you, <laughs> to bring you back, if you're gassed, to pick you up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's like two minutes gone. Bro, that's true. For bro. someone who's pushing the pace, true, trying bro. to tire someone, that's a lot of that's time, man. a lot of time. You know what I mean? And then the overtime, yeah. the guy out there sweat on the mat. Yeah, there's a drop yeah. of this. There's let's a drop of honest, that. Like, um, let's say your fight with Elijah, like at trials, there was a lot of stuff happening off the mat and there's like we never know how exchange can happen yeah. if it happens within the mat so it's like obviously in adcc has kind of become a thing like having those exchanges off the mat which is fine because we all have agreed upon it so it's like we yeah. can't kind of like fight it mm -hmm. so if an exchange happens off the mat that might have not happened within mm -hmm. we have to just that's just how the game is but just if we could just eliminate that, like the odds of having like mm -hmm. all of these unpredictable, like the slanted walls is not unpredictable. It's the same thing all the time. Like it's not adjusting, but bro, if you fall on a bunch of people, like it's kind of an uneven surface. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to use that as an excuse, but I did fall on someone. <laughs> If you're listening to this, my man, or or miss, or if you're listening to Brother, this, you lost. <laughs> I I am very sorry for landing directly on your head and smashing you. Not just me, like two like two guys at full speed. You know what I mean? So no, I do like the idea. I think I think for my style at least, I, I believe your style as well. We push, we go for the kill. Yeah, we're trying to fatigue people over time. So every second that are my opponent, your opponent gets to rest for me is a loss yeah i know obviously there's a minute but i feel like that minute is if you use it wisely how many times in the match you you tunnel vision yeah 100 yeah yeah that's the thing you know you maybe you don't see it but your coach sees yeah. it yeah your yeah. teammate sees it mm -hmm. your teammate knows your game mm -hmm. do you know what i mean 100 percent. i feel like i haven't experienced with it yet i haven't experienced that role set yet i but... think it would be very interesting and mm -hmm. as mentioned like i've competed in an a ton of different ones and I don't like the fact that there's becoming a new one that is kind of popping up and I've never tried it. I really wanted to get the experience behind it and stuff, yeah. like get into it. So I don't feel like out of water in any type of rule set, you know? Karate combat, please, please get, a, get, us get us bums in there. Get us bums in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> President Awesome going, going at one, huh, by the way? Bro, that's crazy. That's insane. Yeah. But anyways, that's their battle. That's We're jujitsu guys. <laughs> Let them battle with that. So all jokes aside, and I know said in the intro that you did, that you broke onto the scene for putting our dear friend, <laughs> the GOAT, GR, Gordon Ryan, out. But when do you feel like what made you break onto the scene at first? Like the big blow, you know what I mean? Uh, Was it more like social media tags, people like tagging you and shit like this? Like it's kind of interesting because when I got here, like I was competing a lot. Like I was competing a lot, but I wasn't promoting any, like Christos can testify, bro. I did like, bro, I think I did like four bet matches in a row, like every weekend or some shit. Dude, not just every weekend. But that's like just bet matches. Like if, bro, there was a point I just made money. Just, that was what I lived off. That was what I ate, bro. <laughs> like when I got here, but he, 
crystals helped me so much by trying to find people who wanted to do bet matches with me bet. but outside of the bet matches i competed almost every weekend for such a long time yes like i had a crazy record i didn't even i know and when i won it was obviously against a lot of local austin people which is like like you can say like oh they're local bro the local austin scene is kind of tough bro Texas local like scene. it's kind because of, Austin is becoming the new Mecca and mm-hmm. stuff so a lot of people are trying to come up and mm-hmm. and I my I fought most of the guys mm-hmm. trying to come up when yeah. they moved to Austin like every weekend I fought and I barely I maybe reposted a story someone tagging me <laughs> like but I never post I just like in my mind I was like just compete as much as you can so you can just get used to this shit mm-hmm. and uh because I feel like that's some stuff you lack at, especially when you start kind of later in mm-hmm. life instead of like having those kids who just train. Like I didn't do that. So I just felt like I had to like catch up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that kind of made me a little bit known in the scene, especially training at New Wave, obviously mm-hmm. helped the name. But yeah, definitely when like, check fuck it, <laughs> where the Gordon posted that thing. And right after that, they had the, the first ADCC Open in Costa Mesa. Yes. That was like right, like almost... Like I had that huge hype behind me. Yes. And I think I did like one local turn. I think I did like RJ Knight fights right after that. Might have. And then I did the ADCC Costa Mesa, which yeah. was the the first first ADCC. And mm-hmm. then like I won it, obviously. And that kind of like people like, all right, he's he's a decent. It's, it's <laughs> smart. <laughs> no, but, but that was smart to do these opens because there was so much hype behind them at first. Yeah. We can yeah. agree now what we're like a year and a half later. What is it has been like a year and a half, two years? Let's say a year and a half. Yeah. It's kind of For, yeah. faded. It's like it was super bit. new. Yeah. Now it's more like, a, obviously they're still popping, but they're more like gathering experience for trials and stuff. But that was like, first one was. It was new. <clears throat> sorry, it was new in North America, not in Europe. Okay. It, it was new in North America. But in yeah, Europe. But yeah. Europe already done. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I, I think I've actually done like three opens before that. Okay. Like ADCC opens. And then, what's it called? Dude, you were competing. I remember there were times you competed twice the same day. Yeah. Not the same weekend, guys. Not the same month. Yeah. Within 24 hours, this guy is doing two different competitions. It was the weekend I, I did Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> I remember that weekend. The last one was a flying. But you, you can have a highlight reel of like five minutes of flying submissions that you're hitting. How many do you think you have? How many flying submissions? Honestly, I haven't done them. It's just the one submission hunter was super recent, but I haven't done like a bunch of that weekend. I did two. I jumped twice <laughs> when I did the back to back in three. I I jumped twice. Like I did like flying omoplata. I don't know how the fuck that worked, but it fuck it. Jesus. But, uh, Air Davi. I've jumped a couple of times. We'll see. Maybe it, I'll do more. <laughs> would you Would you say that's your signature move now? No. The trademark. I think the Dars is definitely the Dars. Yeah, that's your trademark. That's the shit that blew me up, bro. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go. We're gonna run with that, man. Let's run with that. Um, so what was the so you did you did all these enigmas? Shout out to Enigma guys, the Enigma Christos. CEO guys. We gotta mention him every episode, bro, brother. Feeding right here, matches. back in the days, feeding matches, hooking us up with the podcast. Legend in the making, guys. Go check out Enigma TV. Six bucks a month. You can cancel Six anytime. Bucks, this is not all right. That this was our ad segment of the podcast. <laughs> back to the conversation. So you did you did all these enigmas. You got used on to become known in the Austin scene. But who happens to be in Austin is Flow Grappling. Yeah. So was that you went from the open, the enigmas, and then was that the first? Because you did a do WNO at one point. True. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, I did WNO pretty recent after. Mm-hmm. So I did it. I uh, I did so right after the Costa Mesa one. That's when the ADCC Denver came in, where you came in clutch and won that one for us. But unfortunately, we could not repeat that when it mattered. We'll get to that. Bro, get, oh my we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Stay tuned till the end of the episode to hear how David and I, anyways, go on. So yeah, obviously I lost to Elijah at the the event after the Costa Mesa one, uh-huh. um, which you kind got- of like kind of because he milked the shit out of that, and then I did the WNO right after that against uh, Nick Heflin, the wrestler, uh-huh. and then yeah, I got the win from in that one. 
WNO. That was your first experience. How how was it? How how did you feel going into your first like you know from Norway, yeah. Stavanger, going from there competing, and now you're on you know WNO, which is so, one of the biggest yeah. events in the sport right now. Like it was definitely like a cool moment to like because I've always watched WNO when I was at home in Norway. Like mm -hmm. it was kind of the goal was to try to compete there at one time, but at the same time, and it's kind of hard to like actually. Um, like kind of vividly see that happening mm -hmm. until it actually does. So that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like I think it's way more nerve wracking competing as much as, much as I did at like Christos's event. No, no, because it's like the thing is when you compete, when you're used to doing these, like mind you, like I did this RJ or RGA night fights. I did Thursday night uh, Jiu Jitsu and all these stuff. Like there's small spaces and. Most of the people there, you know, mm -hmm. some of them you know really well. They came just for you, mm -hmm. and like small crowd, super intimate. You can't, you can hear everyone. Yes, you can hear all the coaching, breathing, mm -hmm. bro. That shit is kind of more nerve wracking to me. And I did that like every weekend, which was like, you kind of, cause like every day mm -hmm. I had this record. I was like, bro, I'm not only betting like my record, but sometimes like, actually my money, which mm -hmm. I kind of needed at some point, cause I was pretty broke when I got here. Yeah, man. And uh, so I was like, fight, I'm fighting for my money, which I'm going to use to eat. Bro, I got to eat, brother. I'm gonna eat, so yeah. I was, bro, my heart is, and not only that, it's such an intimate place where it's like, it's so small. You can hear everyone. So you get like super nervous. And I had to do that. Like, I had to think about that every week because I had to like, I have to under the weekend. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, you know, the whole, like, when you move to Roca, mm -hmm. everyone who's new is like on the craziest grind where it's like, you just have to show up on every mm -hmm. session like you don't want to skip anything yeah. so while i'm doing this i'm literally like training twice a day the same day i'm competing okay. so i'm like like if i'm competing friday i'm doing both set it was crazy it was wild. you were doing doubles and then compete. yeah i would do that this is crazy man. it's fucking it's stupid honestly like now i would never but i was on this like thing where i'm like you just want to kind of prove yourself so that's why you just did everything but then now you look at luke can relate to that he also kind of went through he did he, he did. also he didn't he wasn't as he wasn't as active as you competitively oh, yeah. speaking but he was like the sessions and stuff the sessions because he would bounce from henzo's he would in do the, the morning yeah. he would lift yeah go to henzo's yeah. go to roca it's like the most unhealthy go to roca again go to henzo's so like he you need that you need and that there's gonna be a phase in your career where you're gonna need to do that you want to reach an elite level you're gonna have to do it i think it's even if you, I I think everyone has gone through some hundred percent, a hundred percent. You and and then most of us paid the price in a way. Like yeah. for me, it was I, I hurt my knee. Some people they catch staff. Some people they 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 go bankrupt. Like they don't have money anymore. You know. What yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I mean, it's a sacri It's why you got to do sacrifices. Yeah. You no, know? my body was completely. It was such an unhealthy thing. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I was able to perform and everything, like it made me realize like like i'm physically capable of a lot of things mm -hmm. like even though like especially getting in force like hearing like bro you're strong and stuff and like everything like you're just like kind of like just keep going and just but now i'm like i'm gonna let my body you have to learn you have to adapt because your body's changing yeah. every everything is changing like you guys see me do these 40 minute long warm-ups i don't not <laughs> i brought it down to 10 okay i have it down the science now it's not 40 minutes anymore but anyways like that just happens with time naturally. You yeah. you kind of have to start doing yeah. these things. You know what I mean? Um, okay, so WNO, you went back to Norway after that. I remember. Yes, I what was that? That was around fall season or spring? Spring. Oh, it was spring. Um, it might have been. Honestly, I don't remember. I, all I remember is it was fun to get that win, and then it was fun to first time ever at being back to Norway after like having gone through all of this like change. Mm -hmm. It comes to like, um like being a little bit more known and stuff and like being deep in jiu-jitsu yeah way more deeper than i was um uh, when i was in norway which was mm -hmm. kind of cool how refreshing was it going back home it was fun to have the ability of being like because you obviously go back and you start rolling with people you used to roll with mm -hmm. you kind of could just do <laughs> just do whatever because you like acquired so much skill which was very fun yeah 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 but then seeing the family being in like a familiar place cool, it's yeah. the greatest feeling huh yeah at first i really believe like when you're when you're moving somewhere i feel because i was doing new york montreal and luckily for me back then it was an hour flight or eight hour bus i used to take the bus a lot 
the first one we were doing the grind. Which is also like a, such a long time now. How long is the bus? Sometimes up to, you could never really tell. It could be anywhere between like eight hours to 10 hours like because of the customs because you, you're not the yeah. only one going to customs you have right, everybody you know. <laughs> and you have these people they're i don't know what they're bringing in the bags man you know i had sweaty gear so too bad you guys want to look in there okay. go for it you, you know what i mean <laughs> you're gonna get to taste the blue basement in that bag <laughs> you're gonna taste that humidity you know what i mean like heat literally could like they open the bag and it's like hot <laughs> hot air is coming out of it just gets cooked yeah eh, that's eh, you guys that's what you guys wanted that's what you guys get Got it, bro. <laughs> yeah but i was like i was saying like it, you kind of i've seen people come in burn out leave and we never see them yes. again i have fresh yes. examples man i don't want to name drop because yeah. you know whatever maybe yeah. maybe i'm wrong about the reason that Which i think it's kind of funny because like like i'm not gonna but there's so many like i'm not listen john is he's he's proved himself how good he is mm -hmm. like people can say it's hype and not hype is the fact is that the guy can fucking coach dude he knows so much about jiu-jitsu such a knowledgeable knowledgeable guy and everything like mm -hmm. he is he makes he does wonders mm -hmm. but at the same time like people just assume that if you just train with all of these guys you're just going to become like one of the best in the world mm -hmm. which is like not the case mm -hmm. at all mm -hmm. there's so like there's so many people who comes and trains and might not get the progression they want, who might just lose completely interest. Cause this is a grind, as you mentioned, like even if for you on the top, like the things that Gordon has done while being on the top, just mm -hmm. pushing himself mentally, physically, like mm -hmm. there's not a lot of people who can handle that. Like, especially over that long of a It's pressure, man. It's, it's pressure. a lot. And I feel like you can kind of tell who like kind of gets breaks or makes it, you know? It's rough on the body and we see it like, you know, obviously, I can talk from experience. Antibiotics do destroy you, yeah. you know. But there's also the emotional pressure he puts on himself. Yeah, that takes a huge toll on your body, man. You know what I mean? Like, I can I can recall, you know, during you know university, during school, studying for exams, doing it's late sad. night. You literally feel your soul like yeah. rotting. You yeah. feel like you're getting Such sick. Are healthy. Your head hurts. Yeah. I used to do that. So like when I was back in home. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, back home in Norway when I used to study. So I used to train a lot and I worked and studied mm. and my whole day was just completely full of doing a lot of stuff and it was such a like miserable yeah. grind, just doing so much during mm -hmm. the day, constantly thinking about deadlines and mm -hmm. making money and like uh, like just all of these stuffs combined is such a, mm -hmm. can be way more physically taxing than you would think. People underestimate the toll like emotional stress puts on your body, yeah. you know? almost more like like you you feel it literally in your gut yeah like you feel shit like oh like yeah. weird pain in your gut when you're like stressed or you're nervous or you when i competed with uh, all of those competitions that period i've definitely never been as much sick as i've been in my life that period i yeah. used to get fevers all the time yeah like kind of building up fevers was like damn i'm about to get sick and that's when i usually knew i was kind of overtraining. Mm -hmm. and that period it happened so many times yeah but now you dial it back and you you feel it coming a little bit like as you train you gain a alert yeah exactly you see exactly. coming from a little bit a yeah. little like you can anticipate a little bit more yeah you know what i mean so let's get to let's get the trials one man so let's get there so we did all this first trials you got sick yes. on the way there what was the lesson that you learned from there so there's a lot of lessons i learned from that one because um obviously like i got sick it was poorly planned weight cutting mm -hmm. and just pushing myself I should have stopped way before, uh, like the deeper I got into uh -huh. it. It was just so much wrong, like being prepared super wrong, cutting completely wrong, being sick and not acknowledging that I'm too sick to doing this. Okay. So it was a bunch of stuff, but yeah, it definitely made me think like, okay, like I was so used to competing every weekend, just like being on, like usually on weight. I had to cut a little bit, mm -hmm. but I started to come become a point where I like had to cut for stuff mm -hmm. and then it became like i wasn't organized like that i just knew how to train and just complete. yeah logistics i feel that's a big one mm -hmm. like i i got bit in the, in the butt several times not going there ahead of time enough mm -hmm. you know you get there too close yeah and dude you don't have time to like adapt to the to the new environment yeah you know even if like the time zone is not that different it's a different environment different weather different yeah. this different that so much Going ahead of time makes a huge difference, yeah. man. Well, know? yeah, because that was one of the things I literally got. That, it was so stupid. The whole thing was, 
And to be fair, like I remember when going back back and forth from Norway, because I think before that I've gone to Norway twice, mm -hmm. and for some reason, like the jet lag wasn't that crazy. Mm -hmm. So every time I like go went to back to Norway, I trained immediately, felt kind of great. I went back to the states, trained immediately, felt kind of great. And then like there was a point where I like started to, like to not go my way like that, and then everything just went to. Yeah, that's time, man. You know what I mean? Time your body it catches up to. I remember you telling me when we were in Boston, like you feel like that jet lag is taking the yeah. life out of you. Yeah. It does, man. It does. So we end the year. No trials for you. You do your first run at trials, you crush it. Walk me through that day. So I've done trials before that though. I've done like way before I moved. Or this was like the first trials I did when I moved to rope uh yep. to Austin. And uh yeah, basically like first match, I was able to submit him. Mm -hmm. with uh i think i took his back or something second one was uh like uh i think i was able to submit him honestly i don't i don't know why i just i think the core thing was literally fighting you which was nerve-wracking as fuck and yeah. fighting mateus and tommy because that was the whole you know so that's after like four or five matches i met you guys and then mm -hmm. that's probably it's crazy when you look at when you look at the previous trials too you look at joseph's run he he beat all three of us yes you know what i mean yeah. that's what people found like super impressive yeah you know i mean like oh this guy came on we don't know who he is and then mm -hmm. you know he he won all three matches you know yes yeah. it, it was good you know I mean, you yeah. kind of had that similar yeah almost had the same run which is kind of funny to think because like uh like it people sleep on the european trial bro it's like you have to think like the top eight people in european trials it's a fucking it's very tough Competitive. especially if you include joseph into it like me like you tommy mateus mm -hmm. joseph it's Tariq. it's so it's such a hard bracket so i feel like people kind of underestimated it but it definitely you know, it was a fun time to be able to compete there after training yeah it's so weird man it's so weird because i remember that week that 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 week from one weekend to another we had freaking two matches man yeah it's it, the worst feeling yeah. you know what i mean yeah but this you know it was complete that's like like the matches were kind of almost similar like the end of it like the way i took you back in the first the, <laughs> you took my afterwards <laughs> dude i gotta give it to you i rewatched it and the speed at which you hit that level change like collar level change double leg i was like bro there's like i can <laughs> try to do whatever defense that's it. He's on the back. But I'll tell you what, man. That's one thing we discussed. I remember, and like, I feel like we should rerun it. I only got really upset after you lost the finals. I know, yeah. I truly believe that you were, because I was very upset as well. Because that was honest to God. Because obviously, I trained with you, so I knew that fight would be fucking like nuts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mateus, I always lost to him before, like when I was uh, competing, like I'm mean, the come up. Yeah, and uh, so he was on, and I he's fucking dangerous. Like he can actually like injury and stuff. Yes. And then Tommy is super high level, but he was the one I was most because I would I had trained with them, um, as well. So I was not I was thinking more about, you know, but he was the one that. What were you thinking of? About what? About you and Mateus. Oh, okay, so because you kind of knew Lajaka's game, Tommy and stuff, and I I don't know I felt like everything. I felt like the confidence would have uh, built itself up to the finals as well. So I was like, I feel like everything was going my way and stuff. Um, but yeah, but Tommy's very good at turning it up. He's he uh, has experience and stuff. I think it was a reversal off your guard pass too. Yeah, you so I had a body lock. It kind of, it was too high. It was kind of like a high double under, like where you had a ton of 10 fingers. Mm. And I, I was able to, I was, I was uh, trying to hip switch because I was getting my shoelaces inside his knee. I mm. elevated a hip switch. While I did a hip switch, I believe my body lock was kind of over. I had like mm -hmm. over, I might have. Yeah. He used like an underhook and barrel rolled and flipped me. I don't know. Such an awkward. I don't even know if you've ever done that before. He's, yeah, he's but sneaky, man. He's good at, he's good at making comebacks. He is very good at like creating stuff in the chaos. I and think that's what. End to, yeah. Towards the end of matches, yeah. he's good at doing that. He, is, he has such like iconic matches. Like when he fought Roberto Santos, a European. Yeah, uh, yeah. People like. Herbert. Herbert, yeah, isn't that his... Uh, Herbert Santos. Yeah, the ball, the huge one. Yeah, he he fell off, huh? Yeah, I think Tragically. Bro, I don't know how... What? <laughs> he Tragic. fought... <laughs> he fought... He fought him in the game Europeans. And there's so many people who reference Tommy for that because you have to remember, Europeans, like, people in the States always sleep in Europe. Bro, Europeans, that building is, like, packed. 
Like it's completely packed. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest upsets ever. And when he was able to submit him, the crowd went. I was in there. I was in well, there. It actually was insane. Were? Yes. Like, I did. I did. I did. Uh, we're going to get to your gi, uh, <laughs> transition a little bit, guys. But I had the same phase as you I, I, at Brown Belt. I went all in on the gi for yeah. like oh, it was a full season. And I was there when he did that. And he beat Hinato first. The first time it blew up, the, the stadium erupted. Dude, it's full. It's like, it's like you, like you can say if you have an arena with like 12 housing, I guess like two. But there's different where you have a, a decent size arena, but it's completely packed. Mm -hmm. And all of the guys are invested. Like mm -hmm. everyone. Everybody. And you have upsets like that. Like I think that's the only way you can create something mm -hmm. that can be. Because there's so many people I've talked to as reference to that, like that scene. So like stuff like that is kind of what makes careers what mm -hmm. like you want to have. Because I remember Espen told me like something super cool. Like he was like, he kind of changed my whole view. He was like. Like, I really want to have, when I finish, I want to, like, have, like, a highlight reel I can watch and be, like, content with. Yeah. You know, like, when I finish with my whole career, like, I can watch this, like, damn, I did some cool stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, that was, like, damn, I want to do that against the highest level people in the world. Just, like, have, like, a resume was, like, I did that shit, you know? Against the highest level. Yeah, and just, like, be content with, like, I I put my mark. I show beautiful jiu-jitsu or something, like, people can look at and be, like, damn, that shit is Fuck it, that's cool. Like you can show that to just a random guy mm -hmm. and be like, that shit was kind of cool, you know? If you can, like Gary is a good example for that mm -hmm. as well. Like you can just watch a highlight reel of him. It's like, wow. Dude, I think one of the most watched matches on YouTube is Gary's match mm -hmm. against uh, uh, Toquinho. Oh yeah, yeah. By, yeah. Pal Pal yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Gary, next level OG. Man. Yeah, OG. The, the Granby. Most of the shit that I hit, double trouble roll. That shit, like stuff like that is like, like the way you hit, like uh, when you uh, beat Davi, mm -hmm. like s sequences like that. That's I think stuff like that is priceless because it looks like you can look at that and be proud of how you, the entry and the finish. And yeah, that's what you want to achieve. It's mm -hmm. not only because like, obviously we want to win. It's very important to win. Yeah. But it has a lot of, to say how you win from in in my eyes especially eyes. nowadays man the, the yeah. just the i feel like everybody's attention spans now are shorter with the like ig tiktok yes. yeah. the, this this form of content that's very short people's attention spans are getting shorter you know people forget there's a lot of competitions people move on very fast yeah so it is important for an athlete to to develop certain skills where you're the very best in the world at yes. you know i'm very grateful i got the I got from very early stage in my in my training to be around Gary mm -hmm. because it's insane. Like I've seen him like I would sit out or rolling the things you would hit. It's like and when you see them at an earlier stage in your training, it just so naturally happens to like become your Yeah, which is super cool. That's and I love the fact that I have like you guys in the training room where I can kind of like uh, resonate to that and try to mm -hmm. Put into my game and yeah. have people like look see it in person yeah how you perform like the switch and all like it's so cool to have that as reference so i can kind of use that in my own game as well yeah man anything i can do to help i feel like you have your, your like your style is a little bit different from mine mm -hmm. you know but i feel like there are areas where we can well, you know, exchange family. yes 100 percent. yeah from top i feel like we have we're, like i try to yeah. model after your game a lot right, you know you bro the wrist snaps like the way you hit it like even the first time when you fought mika who's someone you did that a lot yeah before i even met you mm -hmm. I was like, how is he, for some reason, such a simple thing, but my mind wasn't registered how you're doing it. Yeah. For some reason, mm -hmm. makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But I remember when John started teaching it, mm -hmm. and then I saw you, and you hit it on me. I remember the first time we rolled, mm -hmm. you hit it. I was like, this is so annoying. It is, it yeah. is, man. And now I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that bastard, that. It all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's good, man. The wrist snaps are good. Um just normal snaps are good yes you know all that stuff is, is he hit them beautiful against mika the first time he hit a lot of beautiful snaps mm -hmm. he adapted man he adapted he good like on the feet like yeah. even at my last adcc i had inside position you know i was able to move him around but i feel like john was telling me mix more pushing and pulling mm -hmm. i was pushing i was pulling but now how you connect them how you mm -hmm. develop that that timing of oh he's driving back now yeah, we pull now, up yeah, yeah and then circling at the same time yeah. 
So props to him. He adapted. You know, at least I got a good highlight out of it. It's always defensive highlights. With <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's good, bro. He's, He's very, good. very good. <laughs> He's doing good, man. I mean, he he had a he had a good run at ACC. Yes. We, we can say he had a good run. He, yeah. he got pushed. He got challenged. There were some questionable calls, but there were questionable calls also at CJI. Like yes, like isn't it weird now? Like the fans don't respect the guard as much. I feel. Is that there, which is interesting to me is that it's kind of like impossible to win in the jiu-jitsu community anymore. When you go into the comments, everyone is hating on everyone. Everything, man. How weird. Like the Rutolos, in my eyes, seems like super nice guys. Yeah. Well, like everyone was just hating on, like for some reason. And I, I was like, and then you see like a, a good amount of people, like same amount of people hating on Levi so just playing guard. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can... Like, you can never win. <laughs> you always will have people who's going to hate on you, which is always going to be a bit of controversy. But I feel like, you know, like, the, you can't you can't penalize someone for doing jiu-jitsu. For doing jiu-jitsu, because primarily it's, you're on the ground. Yeah. Like, one have to, like, if not, then you have to wrestle. And then that's different, you know? So it's like, we're trying to get the match to the ground. Yeah. When it's on the ground, you can't kind of, you can't complain, you know? Because it's a part of the thing. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. So the week after we go to Boston, yeah, it was a fun time, man. Yes, in Boston, it was getting a little bit cold. It was a good time, man. It's fun. Enjoyed myself. China, Chinatown. Chinatown. We went to train at South uh, Boston. Shout out South Boston. Shout out South Boston, Ruben. Shout out to you, my man. And then the same thing, man. We had another match. It was just basically like we just exchanged back takes, literally. And then it only hit you. When I gave that match away in the last couple of minutes, but I swear to God, minutes, seconds. That's probably like equally like it's funny how like you kind of got hurt when I lost to Tommy in the finals the week yeah. before. Yeah, and then the week after, you... <laughs> I was like, brother, back to back weeks, man. bro. What is is it's crazy? My mind just like like just it was my third comp in a in a, in a... fumble the bag, bro. Yo, like that, that was... was like no, where Max is a co he's a cool guy. I like Max a lot, but I really believe that you made. A tactical error that costs you brand. my mind just like i feel like like brain fart complete like like i don't know if it was fatigue accumulate fatigue over time from traveling time zones we got both you were doing like the whole match you were just passing side to side it was good <laughs> like you were winning the whole match uh -huh. <laughs> which was yeah but it's good man I, I i enjoyed that experience you know it was it was probably one of my favorite like because i did a lot of these like stretches where i compete every week that's probably one of my favorite ones ever you really? know yeah man it was one of my favorite ones because you get to see that sometimes you can detach from your own results and kind of like just wish good for someone else you yeah, know what i mean exactly and then like you True. you emotionally feel it like it's validated through actual like feelings like oh now i'm feeling like terrible mm -hmm. like now i feel like shit mm -hmm. not when i but so it's good, man. It, it, they say, you know, jiu-jitsu is like an individual sport, but really I feel like it's a team. Yeah, it's like, I, it's a, a team. It's the group. Very like, important yeah. for development and at least. So after that, my man, I want to ask you about your experience at, at PGF. PGF, that was interesting. Probably, like, is one of the hardest things I've done, like, when it comes to, like, competing-wise. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, because it was just... Not only was the level high when it comes to like having all of the, like PJ and and everything, but twelve matches over four or five days. I don't remember like twelve matches yeah. or in twelve plus the like the potential fifteen. You could potentially have fifteen matches if you won the whole thing. That Andy had fifteen matches. Uh, the eight man bracket. The yeah, so you have the playoffs, and that's when like you can potentially have three more matches. So it's like no, but twelve matches. It was I definitely felt it at the. And do you feel like that pushed you physically more than when you were competing several times? Because you had that experience. Very kind of similar. It was very similar. The problem is, like, it was so intense, like, having to deal with, like, like, you you have to do some media stuff and, uh, and like, you have to compete, like, three times one day, every day. Like, my last match was against uh, Hanata Kanu, I believe. Yeah. Like, the, right before that match, I literally puked, like, in the bathroom once. I, my body was complete. I don't know why. It's This has happened before. And it happened for recently. Right. We're going we're gonna to go over it. We're going to go over it. Well, I keep giving you guys these little nuggets to, to keep you in the loop. Stay tuned. 
We have some. We have some. Man, uh, before that match, I puked and my body was completely. For some reason, I was able to go through that match. And did like when I watched it back afterwards, I thought I was doing horrible because I was not like I just I was kind of just letting my body do whatever because yeah. I couldn't. But I just didn't. Ha I just had to survive, and then our team won. You just go into autopilot after so many matches. Sometimes huh? you, I, I honestly do sometimes, and it can go. Sometimes I do crazy shit where I'm like, God, that was pretty good. I don't know how the fuck you did that. Like, you hit a sick armbar escape. Like man. I was so proud because I'm like, bro, Gary, hit crazy armbar escape. Bro. I used that. I, I used his as inspiration. Honestly, I had a crazy, that, and then I, I thought so about like. To be fair, I wish it was like a pocket. Like I thought about it. I was like working, bro. I was like, that's what I wish I was. Cause I've seen that. I was like, that, that's kind of like being in the situation where you escape such a deep like position. Yeah. But I'm going to be completely straight with you, bro. Like I physically could not do anything other than what I did. So in my mind, I was like, I knew that I couldn't move my body. Okay. So I was like, bro, just don't tap. Like anything that's happening during the last... <laughs> Three minutes. This is Polaris, by the way, when I fought. Oh, this you're talking about Polaris or PGF? Oh, which one you're talking about? PGF. Oh, at Hanato? Yeah. Oh, no, I did that. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. You forgot. Dude, that's the arm bar defense. I do all the, that. That <laughs> shit. That <laughs> shit was all the pilot. That was like, that was most. <laughs> of, it was what? Sick. What? We got more than one arm bar escape what? in the books, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, but the Hanato one, that was like, because that, bro, that arm bar, I actually fought that uh, at RGA today. You did? Just funny. Yeah, when I cleared that cross face, like, bro, I've done that so, like, John showed a, like, a perfect armbar escape series yes. one day. Yes. It was super early. I think it was, like, the first week I was in uh, Austin. Okay. I swear to God, that one escape he showed, I hit it right after, like, I hit it on the, um, we had, like, a juju round right after that, like, uh, session, and I hit it immediately, and after that, bro, that shit is, like, it sticks with you butter, bro. forever. It's, in, and I can vividly think about when he showed it. It's like crazy how I applied it immediately and just still there. So sharp. Mm -hmm. So so I did it against him. That was pretty cool. But yeah. So I've had moments like this with John too, where he would drop a technique. I hit it. Just and like, then it sticks with you forever. It's so interesting how that works. Sometimes. Forever. And then sometimes some things don't stick with you until yeah. like maybe so, like four yes. or five months later. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it's, it's interesting. I don't know the yeah. science behind the brain, guys, the brain plasticity and everything, but just it's just interesting. Trust in the process. Yeah. So PGF, crazy experience. Then we have, what do we have after that? Something very big that happened but after PGF. Bro, there's been so much random. But let's let's talk about, don't worry about it. No worries. We're going to go to, because you already gave us a little, little bit of information about it. Polaris, how did that happen? So first of all, you were supposed to make your debut on Polaris on an insanely stack card. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was going to be your first match. Our first with Levi. <laughs> <laughs> we got to make that happen, Enigma. Enigma TV. Oh, my God. Smirking in the in the corner. <laughs> Let's try to make it happen, man. Davis, Asaya versus Levi. How do you think that match goes? Honestly, like, I've trained with... Uh, so, I feel like that type of guard is maybe very foreign to people in the States. Mm-hmm. But, like, I have trained a lot with Espen Matizan. If you, people don't know, Espen Matizan is super, um, super good and uh, a jiu jitsu guy. He would say off from Norway. Mm -hmm. He's one Europeans in back, but one world pro. He's like legit, like, and his style, so entertaining. Like, he's a master of the barrel. Mm -hmm. you know? Like, both him and Tommy were very known for this, like, having these highlights, doing these crazy Matrix mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, but his guard, Espen's guard, mm -hmm. Like I was trained with one of the with the best people where Espen's guard is literally like one of the hardest guards to deal with. Yeah. If you train with him in the training room, he's like it's such a different type of guard and have been honestly never experienced it besides him. And I trained with a bunch of people. Mm. So I feel like when I train a lot with them, I kind of got used to and especially when it goes to like uh, having the burn below a text world, which Levi is very good at. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I have that little edge of having experienced it and I train extensively with them. Yeah. So it makes me more comfortable with it. Uh -huh. But I think I would, uh, the problem that Levi kind of cost everyone, like you can even tell how like Cade was struggling with Tommy because Tommy doesn't have the same like intricate, intricate, um, um, uh, retention pieces. retention that Espen has because okay. Espen kind of has a system combined with like a structure he has with his legs and stuff 
while Tommy is a little bit more intuitive when it goes to like throwing in lassos, high legging, okay. and like just having hyper flexibility interesting, as well. Interesting, interesting. But it's kind of um, pre- uh, presents the same problem though, just having a very hard guard to pass, which is laid on his back. Okay. And I feel like I've kind of had a little bit of experience like training with both of them, which makes it easier to deal with. So I, I think love. Levi would be like I when I knew that he was my first match, I was like very excited. Logistics came came uh, uh, came uh, between bro you right after trials i was a fat bro i ate so much i because i went to turkey after boston I bro i was the thing is davis i i have found out that i personally have i have to have off seasons a little bit and when i do it's everybody it's off season. but i do it in a very like now i'm starting to become a little more structured with it but but yeah, yeah. i mean everybody uh, needs an off season let myself go this isn't interesting you bring it up i feel like you you do need to step away from the you need you do need to say no i had to say no to crystals how many times yeah how many times did i say no the last couple of weeks there's events all the time yeah. you have to say no man yeah. sometimes you know and polaris is one of the events i should have said no but the opportunity was so big yeah and uh, I re- like you have to remember like I grew up watching flowers Pl- like even to this day I'm pretty sure that's the event like not all you have done it is super professional yeah it's oh. probably in my opinion the most professional event I've been on in my opinion and and not only that but uh it's European based mm-hmm. so when I was doing jiu-jitsu in Europe when I watched Pl- flowers was like the pinnacle because it's like damn this is like yeah it's based in europe but still has to uh reach that it has mm-hmm. to the states and stuff mm-hmm. and brings all of these good guys yeah so flowers was like a big deal for me for for me i was like i just had to say yes to do it but it was not a smart move yeah the other thing about players that i feel it makes them really like prestigious as an event is how long they've been around how oh geez oh geez since oh, since the first dds members they've been there even they're four you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. So they've been around in Europe to make it work. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, it says a lot about the event. Yeah. You know? Elena's mean, fighting on the next one right now. Which she's, kind of cool. she's got her title defense too. I'm, I'm hoping I can, you know, get another another run at the the, the belt. Um, do Szczynski has it now? One? Yeah, I think uh, Matej's. Yeah, the... we have Levi in the run. No, Levi just lost them, didn't he? Last to Mateus, yeah. Yeah. Espen's in the run now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. That's good. So, you're in Europe. You're in the process of getting your visa sorted. Yes, sir. And then what happens next? Walk us through. Then uh, I'm chilling in Norway at this point because I came straight from Romania. Mm-hmm. So, basically, I could travel to Romania because uh, I had to give away my passport to fix my visa. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, let me just do a competition just to stay active after ADCC. So I did an ADCC Romania because I could travel to Romania without my passport. Yeah. And uh, that went well. I had fun. And then I went back to Oslo. Not in like, I'm like, not in, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, you know? And then Polaris hits me up. They tell me, you want to fight Felipe Andrew because this guy is... Again, Polaris, I don't know why you guys just hits me up when I'm not prepared. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> Give me some time, brother. Yeah, yeah anyways. Yeah. But uh yeah, they hit me up and they I was like, again, bro, last time I missed weight. Yeah. And I rushed that as well. But like they want me this time again, even though it was like I have to just jump with the opportunity. And it's Philippe Andrew. He's very good, very well known. Yeah. If I took him out, it will be a very good like breakthrough and stuff. Yeah. So I kind of just said, why not? You just got to do it again. Yep. <laughs> and then our boy gets caught. And he gets popped. Yeah. Which he is get, interesting. He gets popped for? Yeah. Uh, I think it was clothing or something. Something like that. Yeah. What are your thoughts about the sport being, <laughs> um, you know? Like fair to Polaris for holding their thing. Yeah. So. I like that. Yeah. They mentioned like, cause they've had like a post up a while ago where they talked about how like, if you're banned in any type of organization, we're not going to have you. And then uh, I remember who was, I think, Roy, um, uh, uh, they told me, like, the day, I think it was the day before the event, Yeah. they told me, like, uh, oh, Felipe Andrew just got popped, or they just announced it, and that uh, basically they told me, like, oh, you might not be able to fight him, and then we found out that now we're not making, the fight is not happening. So basically they just had to find a new replacement, and they told me, do you want to fight, um, do you want to fight this guy? I just said, bro, whoever you got. I'm here. Yeah, they were like, because uh, Felipe Andrew obviously outweighed me. Like, I weighed at that point, like, 84, 83 kilos or something. 
And then they were like, we have this guy named George. And he's like in the low 90s or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, if you want to fight him, I'm like, yeah, I just pick whatever. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I remember George, man. I remember when I went to London Grapple Club to get ready for Tommy. Yeah. I had a match versus Tommy. He was a good training partner, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was he's tough. He's tough. Don't get me wrong, but like, I was kind of like at a point where my, like, people, I got, like, it's not a, it's a very obvious that I got tired. Just very obvious. Yeah. Something, something happens. Like, what I they? feel like, like, people can assume whatever. Like, honestly, in my mind, I think the whole thing, when I think about it now, is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, because like the whole experience just being in Romania, just getting like the last, bro, Dominic sent me the funniest meme about like, he was like, this is the last three minutes of your match. And it's just, just this anime reel or of this guy just surviving, these four guys just beating the shit out of him. Just, <laughs> just me just getting beat the shit out. That was so funny because like, it's kind of, honestly, the whole situation was like, I think about it afterwards and it's, I would... Like, it sounds stupid, but I don't think I would change anything. Because the whole weekend, I was back home in Norway. It was super fun, bro. It yeah. was very interesting. And you went viral there, didn't you? Ryan Glick was there as well, actually. He coached me. Thank you, Ryan Glick. But he witnessed, <laughs> like, the fucking... Bro, at the end of that match, I lay down for, like, I don't know how long. Bro, there were people surrounding me. They're putting oxygen tank on me, like, the fucking... Just trying to, I, I told it, bro, take that shun that man to the medic. It annoys me. Bro, these paramedics are trying to help me. Every time they try to take me vertical, I start puking, bro. Wow. And I started puking like four, uh, three or four times. And uh, I just couldn't, my whole body was aching. I couldn't move anything. I couldn't like, it was just, it was crazy. But what do you think it is about the puking? Because you're probably not eating too much before. I'm not. I'm like eating a decent, like normal amount. I'm not trying to eat anything. I actually, I, when I'm hungry, I eat, but I try to keep my stomach a little bit light before like competing and stuff. What do you think it is? Do you think like your DNA is being like altered trying under to stress or something? I don't know what is happening. You're getting rid of trauma or this, something. I, I think this, bro. Could be. Could be. It could be. Because this has happened like more than twice now, I think. So there's something. But I'm just glad that something healing is happening. You're healing. Let's hope that's that. just that's let's just... hope after the end of this, I'll be like a mythical creature. I don't know. <laughs> just... You're enlightened. <laughs> you reach the Buddha status. No, I don't know. But it's, it... I think that case was just very funny. I'm just saying that because like you hear these people go on these spiritual like you know <laughs> adventures where they go and they do like a bunch of ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or they like they like micro they like take doses of psychedelics or something, and then it always like it always comes out through like puking or right. you know they go to the bathroom. There's they do the something thing. happening. That's for you. maybe like taking your like redlining or taking your brain in a in a way or your body you're pushing it away is like kind of helping you. I don't know, like just cleanse your. I don't know. Maybe, bro, maybe. I'm open, I'm because you're in I shape. Like, like the guys. Yeah, yeah. So when I train, bro, I don't get tired. Like people can think whatever they want in their I don't get tired, bro. Tired is not a thing. It doesn't exist. I know, dude. But know. definitely everyone has seen that it exists. <laughs> There's something. There's something interesting to look into. There's uh, certainly something worth looking into. Now I'm serious because you, you look, look at the match. Like obviously you set a very high pace in the beginning. Yeah. But that's but something. Honestly, you... it wasn't even that high. It was high, but like it's nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. 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 You know, and then you're just really dominating that yeah. much. And yeah. there was, it was actually halfway. So it was halfway through holding his back. I was aggressively trying to hand fight, and obviously that's like tiring and stuff. But it was halfway through holding his back. I was like, now I actually can't do anything. Like I was, I was trying to like while I was doing that, I was like, okay, let me start trapping arms. So I was like letting go. I was thinking about starting configuring my legs in a way where it would start to become a little bit more mobile, where I can like release the bottom. Okay. And then when I start just like, okay, let me just do something with my legs. And I tried and it didn't work. Yeah. Because I literally could not move my legs. I was like, damn, this is a problem. So what I did, I just kept the body lock out of body triangle. Because like just the configuration of my legs, I don't need to put as much pressure to just hold the triangle. Okay. So I was just like, it was kind of this flopping holding there. And my arms was just like this. I was like, damn. If he escapes this, I'm fucked. Like, I literally thought about this. Oh, my God. And then midway through, I was like, if he gets out, I just don't, just don't tap. That was the only thing I was thinking about. Like, while I'm, like, thinking about, damn, I can't move anything, bro, when he just don't tap, bro. And then he got out, and he threw a lot of stuff at me, but I didn't tap. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't. 
<laughs> How was there any physical damage to your body? Oh, I was compo- like obviously that's crazy. Pool, but like I trained like literally right after when I landed in the Austin again. I trained like I was chilling. That's like, great. I'm completely fine. I don't know how. That's amazing. <laughs> but I'm man. chilling. That's amazing. So since then, you started picking up the gi again. Yes, yes. I'm. I'm really trying to be, like, as long as I'm a purple belt and stuff. I'm just trying to be active as much as I can in the gi to get the, like, the experience I kind of gotten in no gi. Just keeping, because I really believe I can do well in the gi, and mm-hmm. that's been like a dream of my way before I moved here. Like, I looked again. I looked at Espen and Tommy and all these guys like doing. So it's like when I moved here, I was doing well in no gi and starting to pick up. But I was like, I didn't want to forget the whole like why i did jiu-jitsu like it was kind of fun to do gi i really like to do gi it's yeah. fun yeah and i think i would have regretted not like committed to the stuff i really wanted to especially when i that was one of the reasons why i started yeah so now i'm like i'm just gonna send it bro i'm just gonna compete in both because yeah. why not i can do it yeah but you said something interesting you said it's also good for your brain like that you're stimulating yeah. your brain and because they're similar it's still jitsu but yeah. they are like yeah just small tweaks, small yeah. changes that you got to do. And I feel like that diversity. Hundred, I really, and I think, I think it makes jujitsu more fun for me. Cause like, mm-hmm. as well, like I, the, I think the variety of having, yeah. cause I remember doing track and field, like my, our coaches always, or our coach always told us like, it's actually very healthy to run on different turf. So even though like our competition turf is like, you know, the orange where you can have yeah, the pick yeah. shoot and yeah, yeah, yeah. spike shoes. Uh-huh. But like we would do like intervals, like on, uh, what's it called? Like just don't. What's the um, play? No, um, grass. Just like anything. Like it could be asphalt, or it could be the like the when they have like the just a bunch of like the small stones. Like a gra- I don't know the fucking turf. Word. Turf. I like, I think it's good. turf. Grass turf. So like uneven. Point is like running on uneven surface is good because it provides variety and is good for you. Even though that's not what you compete on. No. Most of the high level people in like coach track and field, they mm-hmm. train on different turfs and one they compete on. Yeah. Because of the variety is healthy. And I think that can apply it in a lot of different stuff in sports and just like if I can like do something else, like because I re- I was at a point where was like I feel like I kinda have to do like a hobby, like a sports hobby just to like keep my mind not like completely invested in one thing. Cause I think that's kind of like Yeah. And like if I can do that while doing jujitsu, which is kind of the gi and keep being competitive in that, like I think it's a good it's a good like balance okay. so what else what other kind of hobbies do we have on the list no that's that's it point because i'm doing gi now it's fun for me it's fun doing variety like jiu-jitsu the whole day but like we don't have any other hobbies right now anything anything outside jiu-jitsu i watch anything you no know, to youtube i watch a lot of different stuff i listen to music i what's on the uh, anything What's on the like? You open YouTube. What's on the like the first page? Oh, What's I started the first. It's ch- anything. It's anything. Come on, man. Pull it up. Can't Let's see. The camera goes back. There. <laughs> the camera won't <laughs> see it. Anything. No, man. YouTube like, is is I'm pretty sure safe. Man. Usually they keep it, you know, pretty PG. Uh, uh, like whatever. it could be anything. Like rated E for everyone. Jutsu. It can be music. It can be. It's anything. Bro. What kind of music? Norwegian music. Occasionally. What about uh, Ghanaian music? I had my like Afro beats. I listened a lot to it. Okay. Growing up with the family, you probably listened to a lot of music that was from, yeah? Yeah. Do you still listen to that? Is it yeah, about, for sure. For sure. Brings yeah. back my race. There's a lot of like OG songs, which used to be played like at home a lot, which I kind of like listen to just because it kind of reminds me. Yeah? yeah. Same with me, man. Same with me. And I love when they pop up in my head. Yeah. Like, the old songs in the, in the car, in the back, driving the places with your family. Yeah is good it brings you back to your like was, childhood yeah there was a point when i moved here where i was like a whole period where i listened just to like norwegian rap for some reason like just a bunch of like because i was i guess this is my way to like kind of i'm missing home in some way yes but it Dude, was that's, definitely yeah that's it's so weird. crazy that's right when i'm in montreal i don't ever listen to arabic ever no. yeah i like it play i'm like skip it but when i'm here and it's been a couple of weeks or i'm it traveling different, bro. it hits different you yeah. it's like oh this is you know it reminds me of home you yeah. know what i mean so what about the support from the family? i remember when when we talked about it you know you mentioned that they're not really aware of no, they don't of, honestly till this day they're like kind of clueless clueless still yeah. even now rem- yeah even now because you have to remember that i moved here like on a student visa so my whole thing was like i'm moving there to study because if I because you know how foreign parents can be like I told them I know exactly how they can yeah. but I broke mine 
So I broke them mentally. Mine are still strong, healthy wrestlers. <laughs> They're still so like if I like even till this day like. They're yeah. They're not cool with. They're still not cool with it. Still not cool with it. Even though you've made, like, you've you're already at a point where you can say you've accomplished m more than most competitive grapplers. Like you would think that if you made twenty grand of jiu jitsu, you will be like that. Seems like that's something, but in one week, yeah, in one week you did that. With the, still no, still bro. Wow. For their strong bro. First, so the thing is, my parents like you can't. You have to also put to in perspective. These guys like moved. Like my loving parents, they moved from a different country to Norway to raise kids so they could go to school for free, get a proper education, so they don't have to live like a life like we did. That's like the whole thing. Yeah, and yeah. All like my sister went to school, did well. My brother has a family, like he has kids and wife in the house. Like, okay. bro, imagine the youngest kid. Like, just put this in perspective. He just, like, I did pretty decently well at school. Like, I my whole thing was I was gonna become a lawyer. Like, I wanted to study to uh, study law. Like, I love in that. I love and uh, that. I just like I started doing jujitsu, and I just did that all the time. And like, my mom is like consistently starting to wash geese. Like, what the. What what is this is karate suit? Like, what are you doing on the side? And they didn't mind it because I was still doing school, so I was like, as long as this kid is still studying, I don't care what he does. Like for fun, I guess. Yeah. And I just kept like competing all the time, but they were never invested in any of the times I compete. Like they just didn't like it wasn't the thing, you know. They just did not like if we, if I went back, they just asked like how is school basically because that's like the most important for them because they don't want me to waste the opportunity to have being here or being in Norway to study for free proper education Aww. it's like it's a kind of a and I get it because imagine you have this kid and you want him to do this and then he just bails on everything he just chooses to like grapple for a living jiu-jitsu like too. move to it's like are you stupid especially you know with the with the plan of becoming a lawyer Yes, that's, that's a like pretty a like very sharp turn, yeah. Sharp turn, but it's a lot of work. And if you don't like it, man, I mean, I've I've met people who are lawyers and then ended up being yoga instructors. <laughs> after, I'm serious. After, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I legit have friends who became yoga instructors who opened up a yoga studio, who do these retreats in Costa Rica. <laughs> you know and they're way happier and then they find the way to monetize it yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but damn okay so but i think it will change at some point man i think it's just the family satoshi said the same thing satoshi said the same thing on the podcast they have advice because they're worried for you i know it's i know it's it's just they're so like they're kind of programmed very differently so even though they're coming from a good place they're programmed in a way it's like they can't kind of comprehend yeah. that this might like making like potentially making equally as mu much money doing something like you're actually like like for a little yeah. is like they can't that's just doesn't make any sense to that which is fair because you have to remember where they're from like they're yeah. like my my dad like what i did traveling to the states like doing that huge risk like people with, like back home like especially people around my age are like that's a kind of a crazy move like what you did 100%. basically like changing your whole life like competing every it's so stupid when you think about it mm -hmm. but like my dad like he he traveled to the europe by himself like he did the same like in islam they call it hijra mm -hmm. when you like do like a big hijra yeah. yeah you do like a journey like a pilgrim yeah yeah, yeah. You know, like because yeah. you have to get information from a different place it's, it's a part of life that's how you kind of gather that's what they did back in the days you know yeah so i feel like to to in evolve in any type of craft you kind of have to do that once in in your life it's so beneficial yeah. for you man. and my dad my dad literally like went across the world just to have a better life yeah he hustled like bro my dad is uh he's crazy bro yeah but i mean it's 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 craziness but it's good and it's good healthy levels of <clears throat> sorry levels of insanity yeah exactly yeah because it's for like a cause it's passion yeah it's drive it's so like i think stuff like that is very inspiring and like it's it's a very attractive trait to have because yeah like you can tell like when someone's hungry uh -huh. and trying to like like and it's driven by pure passion and not only like hunger like you can if it's genuine as well like you can just tell like this guy just wants something good for himself or for his family or uh -huh. for someone he loves like it's very it's cool to witness and like yeah 
And for the listeners, you don't have to travel the world, but if there's something, you know, that is, yeah, you have to make a decision that's a little bit hard. You have to step out the comfort zone, pursue something, do it because you're, you're not, you're, you're, you're going to regret it if you don't, you know, you're going to regret it if you don't. And the, just the hunger and the drive, you're going to, this is what's going to help you overcome the obstacles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now <clears throat> you can use that in a way to like m drive you to make it like to become very successful, financially stable in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. In Norway. It, Cause you mentioned like, so do you see yourself one day, you know, mini Davis Asari yeah. having a family? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is cause yeah, you have like, you can model after yeah. your parents. You see that you're like, I want, I want something similar. I truly like even till the, I don't even, I'm not even close to having a kid. And I'm not going to have one until like, I'm actually ready to like, yeah, please, 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 please just wait. Man. But like I, I, I take like, I, it's probably unhealthy i'm not gonna lie but i'm literally taking decisions now like for my future kid like i'm thinking about stuff like this like the yeah. way i'm st the way i'm handling stuff and like mm -hmm. avoiding stuff and like i i want to have like a like a healthy relationship or a healthy situation where i can have a kid yeah and family and like take care of them and stuff no 100%. so i really resonate to having like that type of end goal yeah no that's good but you have you you're setting yourself up now Shout out to Gate City Five, Let's go. Martin. Mart Martin, in Pocatello, somewhere in in Idaho, right? Yeah, somewhere in Idaho, guys. This fucking guy chilling, just helping. This angel of a human wow. being, dude. You know how it happened? At first, I was I went to the after party at ADCC, not the one that just passed, the one before, 2022. And I'm just walking, and he's he's like, "Hey, uh, Taza, like, nice job at ADCC, whatever. You know what I mean?" And just like, yeah, I have this event. He told me I want to bring you. And that's how it happened. I just was into randomly at the airport. It's crazy. And now he's got. And how the world is even crazier. Like imagine me and Oliver competing against each other at uh, trials a week after compete again against each other at, uh, in Boston. Yeah. And the same, like that's where you linked me up with Martin. Yeah. Which helped me actually like be able to stay here. Well, yeah, bro. He's like, that's crazy. We spent so much time. Like it was so cool, man, doing this with like with like a teammate you know traveling it's, it's just so much nicer it and you have yeah and i'm like wait a minute you're trying to do this i have literally someone super reliable super like yeah amazing to deal with it was the blessing in disguise yeah no martin was was a was a g but basically what i was trying to say now you you kind of you keep getting those results those accolades you keep be, being a good grappler you can do it here in the u.s it's not that something you 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 uh, consider or you really see I, yourself living in europe like so the thing is like even this for my career is easier to compete from here being based out of here and i think just making money off of just in general is way better here yeah but i honestly really want to take that sacrifice of like giving up on that just to like be i want to grace a family in norway because i think like i really like norway, yeah yeah no that's... i want to say that is a better like on here bro but kind of it is but Hey man, look, <laughs> look, I love, Come on, bro. <laughs> I love Montreal, man. I haven't forgotten about Montreal either. Canada is also a very good place to, to live, to grow. Obviously there's pros and cons everywhere. I still don't know fully. I just know I want to be close to the family. Yes. You know, that's that to me, like the feeling that you get being close to their family. There's, there's nothing like it. Yeah. You know, when I'm, when I'm home with my parents back in Montreal, you know, it's just, you just feel a certain kind of way. It relaxes you in a way where like being away is kind of like, you know, it, yeah. I don't know. That's for me at least. You know, some people and and to the listeners, man, if if like it doesn't have to be blood. Sometimes it's someone you're close to. Like I have people that I'm very close to that aren't blood. You know yeah. what I mean? Like shout out to my guy, for example, my trainer. I'm on the phone with him every day. Like it doesn't have to be family, you know, but it just could yeah. be someone you you feel like you resonate. You're close, you know. And I feel like I have a bunch of people. Or like I have a a friend group back home, which is like like before jujitsu yeah. um after just like they're just going to be there and i really appreciate them mm -hmm. and they're just obviously in europe so it's always super fun to go back and visit them and like catch up and stuff yeah so, like being closer to them is super fun and think about mm -hmm. uh, yeah um, but i honestly like austin i've been here for such a long time and so much has happened to me in my life here like it will always be like my second home or my first home. i don't even know anymore but don't know it's like this will always be a home mm -hmm. Like it, it, it always. Things are changing though. Like you're seeing more and more money being made online. Yeah. You know, so that kind of takes the pressure of deciding where you'll be. True. It kind of takes it away. Like instructionals, 
the biggest stars in the world, whether it's it's comedians, whether it's it's football players, they're all going through online. They're all going to YouTube. Yeah. Like you look at Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He he just opened the YouTube channel. He hit a million subscribers in like forty five minutes. Oh, and brother. Do you know what I mean? So this this is like this is just the sign that tells us that okay, the money's starting to shift more there. Yeah. You know, obviously for me, what I enjoy the most is traveling, teaching seminars, meeting people, rolling, you know, every all that good stuff. This is this is very cool. This is nice. But now you have that option nowadays where if, if you learn how it works, you, you can make a very, very good living from anywhere in the world. You know what I mean? You can open your academy and there's a lot of gyms out there doing very good, yeah. you know, off of that. You know, you can model after that. You can learn from that. So, you know, there's it's good that you kind of have an idea of where you want to go. But, yeah. You know, I feel you like never know, yeah. you never know. You got to keep an open mind. That's why I try not to choose too much, but I do want to advance my life in a way where I can be closer. That's just closer to the people, yeah. you know? I think at the end of the day, that's where, like, like sounds super cheesy, but honestly, it's true. Like, it's yeah. the people you actually care about. You want to be close to them. So you will go to that place where it's yeah kind of gravitates towards those people. What about coaching? You've you've done some coaching, no? Yeah, I thought I've had uh, I have classes at RJ now. Okay, at consistent. Uh, says, yeah, consistent group in the gi, which is very fun. Like nice. the group at RJ's, I love them. They're so nice, mm -hmm. and the vibe is super nice. And like, I just like the whole upset uh, setup for that. And uh, I obviously had like started to do more seminars and stuff in private. So yeah. seminars. Where's your favorite place that you've taught seminars at so far? Favorite place. Favorite country, favorite city. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm feeling Romania right now. That was a recent one. Romania, I've been to Romania twice now. Second time, now I'm actually been to Romania. So now I like Romania. The second time you consider it like, okay, now I got to know it a little bit more. I got to Romania know the people. Is, it's nice. It's something about like the jiu-jitsu community. Wherever you go, you can, oh, so cool. You're gonna know someone. Someone's so, gonna look after you, and you kind of trust. You know that. That's like yesterday. I, I think the Uber driver was asking me, or I, remember who it is. Oh, you, do you feel safe going to? I'm going to Mexico next week. Do you feel safe going to Mexico? I'm like 100. percent Yeah. I have friends. They've really? come. They've trained with us here. That's the best. I found out the best way to travel is to find people who are, what's it called? Well, people like actually are from there. Yes, they're locals. Like in locals, like I think that's the best way approaching mm -hmm. traveling because then you actually get to see the place. Mm -hmm. You get to know the ins and outs, like the mm -hmm. smart, like that's the best way to travel. And that you start to appreciate the places you yeah, go. They, 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 that pride that they have of their where they're from, it kind of comes on to you. You know, you start yeah. to feel the pride that they have exactly. in that status, and you're like, oh, this place is actually very nice. Like the way they. I mean, obviously you're seeing you're seeing the highlights you yeah. know what i mean you're, you're seeing you know you're seeing the good stuff okay. you know anywhere yeah. you live anywhere you live some good stuff too yeah. you know there's there's gonna be some some things you know like everywhere i live i lived in new york i lived in montreal puerto rico austin there's like, a very big contrast between all yeah middle east saudi in the middle wow. east the gulf well, you're a very well traveled i forget that sometimes like yeah, I should travel a bunch. Well, it's good, man. I get to meet different cultures. I get to see different things, different yeah. perspectives. You know, it's it's pretty cool. You know, it's pretty nice. But all the places have like something good about them, something bad about them. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think it's perfect. That's like no way is the closest. No, no, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about what about a continent like Africa? Would you do you see do you see like things? <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, shout out to my. African uh, brothers. No, but here's why I ask. I had an episode with Luke, and we we're talking about corruption in South Africa. Yeah. We talked like for Bad like boy. 15 minutes of corruption talk. Not what it goes to South Africa. I told him, bro, like, bro, when are we going to South Africa? He's like, I'm not going back, bro. Like, I want to visit. Show me some, bro. I'm not. I don't want to go back right now. Obviously, he has pride for his country. Like, he loves country. Like, he loves his country. Yeah. Thing, but. He loves the rugby team more than the actual country. I, I think so too. What? Didn't they just win the World Cup again? I'm pretty sure they just, like, as we speak, they're probably celebrating really? the win of the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure I saw it on the internet circulating. But no, that would be sick. We talked about, you know, the corruption, the money disappearing, all that stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of it all over, I mean, all over the world. Yeah. All over the Africa world. Africa has some. There's, I mean, look at you, man. He even name dropped you. He's like, look at Davis, the genetics, the the, the like, the gift, the physical. Bro, Imagine the black you, athletics, brother. 
Imagine you start you start something somewhere there. Okay, successful Davis wow, gold chains. Really like, I have cousins who are built completely the same as me. Like there's no, oh. there's so many. Bro, my uncle. People <laughs> 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 in God, I swear to God, people are built different, bro. There's, you don't need to tell me. I've I've mentioned it throw again. Throw them a gi. Show them, bro. Give them <laughs> John's instructional, bro. Just throw them a fucking DVD. <laughs> You're gonna get a black Gordon rhyme. I'll tell you for sure. I don't doubt it. <laughs> I, I, I don't doubt it for. <laughs> oh, bro, give him some skills, bro. Let him know what to do. He'll do it, and he'll do it fast. The drive, it fucking. The drive for them to learn, dude, it has to be done by someone. There's a guy called, um, freaking hell, I forget his name. He did the uh, Francis Ngannou Foundation, Sam, 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 something, Sam Cook or Mac Cook or something like that. Okay, okay Sam Cook, for whatever reason, the, the foundation fell through. I don't know, Ngannou didn't want to like uh, fund it anymore and everything, but they had some freaking, oh, yeah, they had like there were kids in Gi, I think. Uh, there's like, a there kid now. Oh, there were kids. I saw like people do jiu with Francis, like, yes, the, in Africa. Yes, this is like a Bermboa X car or some shit. Mm-hmm. It was kind of cool. If you guys have the time to the listeners, uh, there's a podcast before that when I was still living in Montreal called um, Off Balance, and I did an episode with him. Make sure to go check it out because he explains everything. It was really cool. And then one of the athletes, I forget his name. He's on, he did Polaris, the same card you were on. He's meddling. He's got oh, his visa. That kid, the, That's oh, from. Oh yeah. I actually got to meet him. I just talked to him a bit. Yeah. He just seems like a really cool, cool kid. Can you imagine more of that in Africa? Bro. And the thing is not to be like racist or anything, but <laughs> here comes the, but listen, Uh-oh. like when I, I remember, like it's been a while since I've been in, Ghana, obviously, but when I was there, when I was like 16, like kids, even when they play football, bro, they're so playful, bro. You don't have know the power of a kid like doing a craft, and they become so good at it. But when they become playful with it, mm-hmm. so when they like, like, there's different like playing football, and then you see like Ronaldinho or like people like tricksing with it, having fun, doing crazy mm-hmm. shit, bro. Imagine having an army of black kids, bro, mm-hmm. doing jiu-jitsu. I want to see it like that athletic as fuck just making bro the art they would create it would be in vain and I want to see it I want to see it if you look if you look at the French team that won the world cup 90% black (laughs) (laughs) just look at the names of the athletes man no pure dominant genetics <laughs> bro i don't know you gotta cut that out no, is that allowed no no keep everything <laughs> don't cut anything out chris but no for real you guys can go google it um french squad the what, what, what year was it 2018 i believe the lineup dude it looked like africa all-stars <laughs> africa all-stars on one team no bike crushed it yeah yeah man no i want to see it i want to see someone make that commitment that this guy did i really do yeah. i mean I want to, if I do it, I'm probably going to do it in my country. I'm going to do it in right. Lebanon because there's a lot of... It would Lebanon. be, the ideal would be like open up a school with just a bunch of like bunk beds, like people who doesn't even, because remember, there's a bunch of kids who doesn't even go to school. They just work all day. Yeah. It, imagine if you can pay for food, accommodation, and the only thing they have to do like is just to train. Train once like, a day, whatever. Bro, I'm telling you, you're going to make at least a couple of fucking... Let's go, man. Hey, dude, just just build your name, build your name, go, go, go crush, like, go crush the scene in, in Norway, open Shout a massive gym. Day, but your last, open your up. last, like, gig or, like, adventure or something, it has to be something back home because it's a shame the level of talent, the drive, the hunger, bro. all those new traits. New Wave Africa, bro, coming soon. New Wave Ghana, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Black John, Black Gordon. Let's go. Black Oliver. We're going to take John to Ghana. He's going to melt under the sun, literally like an ice cube. Imagine John comes back. He comes for a visiting, visiting New Wave Africa, bro. He just hates Africa. Oh, terrible experience. I shall never return. You know who actually loves. You know who actually. You know who actually Eating with my hands. Oh, what nonsense! Oh my god! No way. George is invested in, in the African scene. GSP. He's he's very what's it called? Adapt. He's he knows it. It doesn't seem like it, but the bro is in tune. I think Burundi. He's been there several times. 
he understands the dialect and everything with the language whatever part of my ignorance but yeah i i want to see it happen man i want to see these like less favored places get that support one day yeah. that's i think that can take jujitsu to the next Actually, level yeah because what we want would be like bro I, it's a whole ass content like there's a if we had like a bunch of people competing out of there okay like in ideal world it would be have his own trials and everything but obviously like uh, the competition scene over there is kind of not as big to do that but like just having like the ideal will be just have a world where like the sport is so like developed where you can find good people everywhere like everywhere think about it man think about it it's not the, the competition is not what grows the sport mm. How, what's the okay you go to your gym let's go to your gym okay roca i get it we're we're it's a professional team it's it's not even a gym it's just a room of guys gathered it's not a gym but let's say rga mm -hmm. okay and rga can be like not the best example because john and people fly from but your regular gym mm -hmm. your regular gym the percentage of competitors how many is it there's not many at all it's not many that's not how you're gonna grow the sport yeah you don't need to compare to build a community and that's what you want a community to yeah unfold itself to the yeah. society and that's how people like usually start yeah because i remember in, in an interview john said you want to do some things bigger than yourself you know and then like i feel like like we said like in the beginning of, of the, this chat we said you know like jiu-jitsu fills this void it does like for for people that are competing that want to replace it with somehow they want to they need like a new social circle mm -hmm. you know they need they need something jiu-jitsu provides that you know it's a martial art where there's like a balance between violence and then like you know camaraderie and all that good stuff yeah so i feel like if you have the purpose of growing the sport you're kind of trying to help the world you yeah. know what i mean yeah you're doing like you're actually contributing even though it looks like a very small percentage yeah you're like contributing to this vast yeah. like big which is very nice to think like obviously you know how to be that deep with it but yeah when you leave you've done something you know? yeah there's the signature moves obviously we talked about that but there's also like okay well we left that behind we left yeah. this gym we left that gym you know obviously yeah yeah it's it's a small percentage but if you look at us as like humanity as earth and everything like we're just like a little speck yeah. of dust in the universe anyways yeah, but you want to this is actually something i'm really grateful because i had like after uh after gee worlds i talked to i was i spent and we facetimed tommy actually and we had like uh he actually really changed my mind about something about like contributing into the norwegian um just to see him yeah because like he's really big on that like he really wants to grow it he like he's based out of norway he is in mm -hmm. norway yep. that's a solid group uh, back home in his hometown mm -hmm. like hugeson is like a small really small city like it's not even it's a fucking village bro you can take uh, bro, i don't know if he's gonna get offended by this but i don't care it's a village bro it is what and it is there's so few people but he's a solid group over there who mm -hmm. trains and there's a good people and he's really big on like trying to invest back in the community and inspire people yeah and personally like like the last person i want to be is someone um people look up to like i don't want to be a guy who people look up to like i would like to inspire someone but um like inspire and show people like i'm from norway but just compete you can end up doing whatever but if someone looks up to me then i feel like i kind of have to change my attitude like to like kind of adapt to what people because i don't want to be a bad influence so don't look up to me just fuck it i mean learn from <laughs> uh, yeah we, we say learn from other people's you know like experiences you yeah know i mean yeah so yeah, you uh, definitely like learn from my mistakes but don't look up to me. it's an experience you know at the end of the day like you learn from experience we all like as a coach for example have made made like a lot of adjustments based on my previous experiences yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and inspiration for the norwegian community is something i really started to be like damn that's something i really want to contribute and the Ghanaian community. And the Ghanaian, obviously. Inshallah. Inshallah. Davis, my man, I've had a freaking blast chatting with you, man. For real. We spent the whole afternoon together. No. We had a couple of errands to run. Evil dude. <laughs> you know, I feel like we could go forever. Um, thank you so much for hopping on, man. Seriously, yeah. dude. It was it was great, man, getting to know you a little more in depth. And you know, I think I think you you're gonna you're gonna go very far in the sport, man. You know, in the short amount of time you've been training, you, the understanding, give the passion, everything. I think you'll go far and you'll give back to the community big time. Thank Guys, you. if you are not, I mean, we saw in the in the comments, we saw some some feedback. We appreciate it. We're gonna <laughs> fix the volume. Okay, I know some of you guys don't like this chair. You don't like this setup. <laughs> the FBI interrogation setup where we're like one feet away from each other we're gonna invest in couches okay we're gonna invest in consistency 
I hear all the comments. I read them all. I appreciate every single one, guys. Do this this one favor. If you guys were able to benefit in any way, shape, or form from this episode, click the subscribe button. Trip. Share. If you're listening to this and you're on the bus, you're lifting between sets, instead of going to IG or whatever, just go to YouTube. Sign in. Remember your password. You need to know your <laughs> password. You forgot your password? No worries. Just remember it once and for all. Sign into your account. You don't have an account? Create one. <laughs> Create the account, guys. Subscribe. Just subscribe, guys. Just give us give us the impressions that we need to take this to the next level. Because I really do want to take this to the next level. I really genuinely enjoy doing this with my teammates, of course. But I also want to expand. We want to go into different different worlds at some point. But we need the Jiu-Jitsu community support for now. Share, spread the word. Davis, thank you so much. And we'll see you guys next time.